Welcome back to New Rockstars! Perhaps the craziest thing to happen to our collective cinematic pure imaginations this week was a Willy Wonka themed event in Glasgow called Willy's Chocolate Experience, which has captivated the internet as 2024's latest, we think, Firefest style scam. In this special episode of The Sneak Peek, we are conducting a thorough investigation to explain what the internet cares the most about this week, other than where Kate Middleton is and who yelled at Rebecca Ferguson. It is what the hell happened in Glasgow with this Willie's Chocolate Experience? Was it all a performance art piece? Uh, we're, we're diving into it. There's a lot of information. The organizer tried to get away with something and has spoken. People who worked at this have now started to speak out on what they actually went through. And it's completely crazy. And because it's about Willy Wonka and because Jessica did an amazing Willy Wonka breakdown of the Timmy the Chalamet movie, we considered, hey, this is worthy of our coverage at New Rockstars this week. I'm Eric Voss here to help me break this down. Willy's Chocolate Experience is Jessica Clemens. Hey, as a Wonka enthusiast, as a chocolatier, I think I can get down to the bottom of this and explain exactly what happened and what went wrong. <laughs> what happened here? What was this? I think we need to document this into the historical record because it is crazy. This I, is absolutely insane. The trauma that those children will have from the unknown is unfortunate, 100%. The rest of the experience, I think, is amazing. It is <laughs> insane to me. It is It is more, it, de it deserves a documentary higher than Fire Festival ever did because this yeah. is ludicrous <laughs> i think we can uh conduct that documentary right here on new rock stars mm -hmm. right now so we're going to present to you the research here everything we're able to figure out about what exactly happened here so this all really began with an event in glasgow scotland that was uh, scheduled for february 24th and 25th uh, in the past week uh there was this website advertising willie's chocolate experience and as of this taping the website is still active yes. it is crazy you can go through this website and see everything and the funniest thing to me about this website is how everything is like trademarked willie's chocolate experience is trademarked like every room of this thing is trademarked it's like what were you trademarking like why what about willie's chocolate experience is trademarked this this website has to be a website that was uploaded to like some sort of like i don't know sentient ai and they because that because yes. i was like the trademarking part isn't necessary and if i am on squarespace brought to you by squarespace if i'm on squarespace there's no way i'm adding that into the html coding <laughs> yeah i think that was like a part of the attempt to make this look as legit as possible like trust us we are using trademarked uh names of things but we're like we're doing a non-trademarked version of it i'm also not trying to be an asshole but like they're trying yeah i understand going the extra mile for that trademark you should have, this is a PowerPoint made by like a child in 2006. And when I say that, it's because the text is so white that it blends in with the color that they chose on the website. So you can't even read it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hilarious. The imagery seems to be AI generated showing this whimsical candy land, but it's specifically not like anything from the Gene Wilder um, Charlie and Chocolate Factory or the Johnny Depp one or the Timothy Chalamet one. It's kind of its own thing. And uh, if you read these descriptions, oh, what was that? No, I was gonna say it might be from the book. It could be based loosely on descriptions of Roald Dahl's book. Yes, I think that seems to be kind of the case here. Uh, it's, it's welcome to Willie's Chocolate Experience. Dive into the whimsical. Dive into the whimsical of Willie's Chocolate Experience. The whimsical what? Whimsical is an adjective, not a noun. A place where chocolate dreams become reality. Book your adventure now and embark on a journey filled with wondrous creations and enchanting surprises at every turn. It talks about the Enchanted Garden, the Imagination Lab, the Twilight Tunnel, having these kind of AI images of these things and descriptions, and no one really knows what it is, but it costs 35 pounds, which in American dollars is roughly 44 bucks. That's okay. how much. So it seems like a fun way to spend your afternoon. This kind of feels like an immersive movie experience, and the reason I think it worked is like... Yeah, in many cities around the world, you can do these kind of like events that are sponsored by Netflix, like the Stranger Things Experience or the It House that was on Hollywood Boulevard. You can go to these like um, non-trademarked concept bars. Like there's the Beetle House in Hollywood. There's the Scum and Villainy Star Wars bar. And it kind of feels like the production value will be worth it enough that your kids will feel like, hey, yeah, that was like worth of an afternoon. This is... Insane. This is all the fear of the Twilight Tunnel and none of the whimsy of <laughs> Willy Wonka. <laughs> Could you you well, remember that scene in the tunnel is the most horrifying thing 
And I'm like, oh, yeah, I literally, I did. I, okay, I guess you got your money's worth. They said you're going to get the fun of the Twilight Tunnel and you walk through the entire experience of it. So, yes. So I want to pull up the video. This is like the longest walkthrough video that was recorded by someone who went to the event. Um, let's just pull it up and just kind of react to this. Um, okay. Wait, so wait, wait. Jessica. And I- <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, yes, let's do it at the same time. Okay, I'll count us in. All right, three, mm-hmm. two, one, play. Okay. Oh my God. So. <laughs> what is that? What, what is that? What is that? MF Doom. That's Dr. Doom. And that's Dr. Confirmed. Doom. So this must be the Twilight Tunnel. Oh, that's the Twilight Tunnel. Oh, the mom knows. Oh no. I love her reaction. She's aware. She's very conscious that she, she spent knows. money on this. She wants her money back. There's a little photo opportunity over there. The rainbow. The thing is, the oh. warehouse was too big. If they had a that's a sexy Oompa Loompa. So there's the hero of all of this. I think this Oompa Loompa actress is wonderful. And we'll talk about how wonderful she is. That later. outfit was insane. A little candy cane bridge. That you part can walk over. isn't bad. A chocolate river, kind of a mini golf production value. There's also it's giving Candyland, not Willy Wonka. Uh huh. Yeah, definitely. I love this guy. And, and this actor who plays Willy Wonka is just a delight. He's committing so hard to this. He is. He straight up is like trying to give these kids what they deserve. He's yeah, and he. I think he is. The kids are kind of into his performance. All the actors here are trying so hard to make this work, that, and I love ugh. them. That little girl is dressed up like the one that chews bubblegum in the Johnny Depp one. She is. Like, kids went cosplaying as this. They have the giant candy bar that was like the Mike TV. And then what are they scooping up? Marshmallows and strawberries? So there was, like, other food there. <laughs> the ladle Just... the ladle in the, the steel. What? I didn't like that. <laughs> no gloves. Like that. Was there gloves in there? <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm being very picky for someone that's like, what? What we saw there uh, will never be forgotten or forgiven. And um, so just to kind of break down some of the things we saw, the figure behind the mirror is what was identified as the unknown in a script that was given to the actors of a, of a mysterious chocolate maker, an evil <laughs> chocolate maker who lives in the walls and hides behind this mirror and comes out and scares you. That's what the unknown is. So that is not part of Roald Dahl's mythology for for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory at all. That <laughs> that is not an evil chocolate tear. I don't know what that was. I don't know either. Um, a ghost this actor a ghost who's really the actor who's leading you on it is named uh, Paul Connell, and he was one of many actors. He says who was uh, hired to play the Willy Wonka, but his name is not Willy Wonka in the script that they were given. The name is, I believe, Willy McDuff. I might be wrong about that. That's the Scottish Willy Wonka. I I don't know if he's a Scottish Willy. He's just this Willy Wonka. But it's not his fault. Um, uh, when people showed up to this, this is just kind of in this, as you can see from the other photos, scant warehouse um, with like uh, an Oompa Loompa that looks like she's in a meth lab. But this Oompa Loompa actress's name is Kirsty Patterson, who is just a saint. Uh, Vulture interviewed her. Uh, and We'll talk about her experience here. But really... The parents were pissed off and they started yelling at the organizer. The organizer was someone named Billy Cole, C-O-U-L-L. And let's just watch the video of people yelling at him. Three, two, one, play. A refund starting from Monday. No, I'm going to call the police. Because you're now in liquidation, you're no longer a company. Is that why you don't have pictures up of your stuff? No. It's actual... Well, shuttle stuff and put up, sorry. We use artificial intelligence to rob the German. So this man is having a... No, absolutely. Is it a fake? That's why you don't... That's why you don't advertise exactly what the thing is about. That's what I said. There's not enough information about it on Facebook. Nothing. And on the website. I love that. Nothing. Is that why he's hired thousands? Because you knew we were all going to kick off? No, these guys are like the caretakers of the building. Y'all acting real chill for people that just scammed a bunch of people. And you got it, 
So it's a scam. You have scammed children. I've done nothing. You have scammed kids. I've done nothing. That's what I've done. It's a total scam. If you could start using they, because I'm fuck out with David and I'm on that camera, you're putting it at me, you're accusing me something, I'm not on David. So you're, 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 you're part of the venue. I've been hired off the venue. Thank you. No, you're not here. You're not here. So again, for the purposes of Clancy, he has... But he's for the company. Oh, he's for the company. He's for the house of Illuminati. Thank you for your time. Do you think you're going to get rid of this? If you want to the cure, how long here be people, parents and their children? Well, you're not fucking sorry. Right you're, in. you're pal. Oi. You're lucky if the cuts put the cameras in, because that's fucking red all over you. Come back. I love Scottish people I... when they are upset and they just, I my heart goes out to these families and these children and oh my I god i want a scottish mom so bad um yeah. we should be lucky to have parents like this who will fight for us i well, mean oh my gosh I, if i feel so bad for these folks like if over but, 800 people okay i agree horrible stunt but you know damn well if i'm showing up to this event i have looked into it uh but that is also just me i'm not saying that the people deserve what happened at all because this was crazy this was insane and you paid 40 dollars, and you're like yeah i'm just giving my children a nice afternoon and then you give them trauma instead <laughs> like <laughs> hey here's what i'll say uh i have a kid now and he's too young to go to anything like this but when you're just like a parent and you're just looking for things to fill your afternoon with like yeah you look at this website it looks i don't know if i were to read the descriptions i'd be like something shady about it but just like at a glance if you're sleep deprived your kid's been screaming through the night and you're just like trying to fill the day with something sure yeah you do stuff like this you the, just show up like 40 bucks but the okay, world that's how much it, it costs to go to the movies at these yeah, days but the world's not that safe anymore you guys can't just show no, up to not. things without prior information and i understand the part that i was more so like when i first looked into it i was like damn these images like you can't trust that but then i was like i looked into the house of illuminati and they do it a lot of warehouse parties that genuinely did look like oh they know what they're doing I get it. I would have probably shown up after I found out that they was. Well, I wouldn't show up after I found out that they were called the House of Illuminati. <laughs> but... Right. That name, the fact that he's just like, yes, I use artificial intelligence to do this. Like he's like, he's apologetic about the reaction, but not apologetic about like what this company does. It's insane. I'm like, if 800 people bought a ticket for $40. You got to be giving them more than what I just saw in that video. You got, you did not give them. These people are yelling at you and you're like, thanks. Goodbye. Hey, welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss and this is a breakdown of the trailer for Spider Chum. We shall finally answer the question of what exactly happened to all the people who just kind of like spiders, but don't have any superpowers beyond not being grossed out by how many eyes they have. Seriously, spiders have eight eyes. Isn't that wild? Most of those eyes aren't even helping with depth perception. So what are they seeing? Ultraviolet radiation? The polarization of light? Some kind of special arachnid aura that humans can't even imagine? Marshmallow? Honey? Peppermint? Oh man, this is so much better. Wait, what the hell is Spider Chum? No matter what you're talking about, if you're talking a lot, One Shot Energy's voice drops can be the relief your throat needs. Go to oneshotenergy.com slash new rockstars to get 10% off your order. So when the police got called is when this kind of hit the press. So now the UK press, the independent did a whole write up on it and then it hit Twitter and then it just kind of blew up. Um, and then the staff, you know, this poor staff have were in these photos and videos and they were kind of the front line but mm -hmm. they have come forward and said okay here's what our experience so i want to talk about the actor who played willie mcduff paul connell mm. uh and he has made some hilarious tiktoks that i highly recommend you guys go watch because he's so funny uh and he said that uh he talked about what the unknown is and he says the bit that got me was where i had to say there's a man we don't know his name we know him as the unknown the unknown is an evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls um at the and he said that at the end of his monologue he was supposed to suck up the unknown man with a vacuum cleaner and he said that he asked them if they had a vacuum cleaner and they said 
said, yeah, we haven't really got there yet. So just improvise. So a lot of what you see him do, he just kind of had to make up. That poor man. That poor damn man. But also that script is so funny to be like, we don't know their name. So they're called the unknown. Yeah. And he, okay, so- he does not look like he makes chocolate at all. <laughs> So we have a page of this 15 page script that uh, Paul Connell said that he received and he said it was just AI generated gibberish. Um, But specifically there is a wonky doodle number one who has to say to a guest, Oh, and if you see a butterfly whisper your sweetest dream to it, they're our official secret keepers, dream carriers of the garden. And then Willie McDuff, has to ga- gather everyone's attention and says, now I must ask, has anyone seen the elusive bubble bloom? It's a rare flower that blooms just once every blue moon and fills the air with shimmering bubbles. And then the stage crew has to discreetly activate bubble machines and fill the area with bubbles, causing okay. excitement and wonder among the audience. And they say that in the script. It has to, cr- it, it, ca- it will cause excitement and wonder among the audience. Like that is that is written, that is foretold, that that will be the reality. I like how they definitely put this into like a chat GPT and then put script and the chat GPT Uh probably was like, okay, exterior this. And they're like, no, put it as dialogue. (laughs) We're going to, we're going to say every scene, every, every introduction. There's a page that says transition to the bubble and lemonade room where it says Willie McDuff suddenly brightening. Speaking of light spirits, I find myself quite parched after our unexpected adventure, but fortune smiles upon us for just beyond this door is a room filled with refreshments. Most delightful. The bubble and lemonade room. Uh, And the thing about the lemonade room is according to Paul Connell, it was just a quarter cup of lemonade per cup that you just get from the grocery store. And then each guest were given like one jelly bean. But you can see in the videos, some kids are given a bit more than one jelly bean. But I think the one jelly bean was just like supposed to be like an appetizer. Like, savor this experience. (laughs) Shut the hell up. Also, okay, maybe they were imitating the everlasting gobstopper. So they're like, this one jelly bean will last you the entire visit. (laughs) Don't chew it. Yeah, don't savor it. it. And they're like, oh, this is the licorice one. (laughs) Yeah, you (laughs) The kids were given no chocolate. At this no cho- chocolate. Chocolate was in the title of the experience. The kids were given no chocolate. Um, but also, doesn't it kind of remind you of like what Charlie Bucket goes through at the beginning of they split a pea into little sections and each member of the family. Oh, you're right. Maybe this is the poor the experience. They're, just, they're, doing, they're doing the beginning and they're eating cabbage soup and washing clothes in a bucket. They're stirring uh, laundry soup. But it, that kind of feels, that's why I'm like, my mind is gone down the rabbit hole, Jessica, where I feel like this is either accidentally or intentionally a performance art commentary on what, on the themes that Roald Dahl made uh, uh, the Chocolate Factory experience about of the wealth gap and like these poor families and like the fact that Charlie is rewarded uh, by given the keys to the kingdom. But like, even that is kind of a gross commentary on the extreme wealth gap that exists in society where it requires this like chocolate maker to have to award some lucky poor kid to inherit the kingdom. Like, why can't we have a more equal society where like, he said, not here. Not here. It's $44. Also, I feel like that's too smart of a concept and idea for that man who was trying to right. run away from the video to do. But I'm giving us him saying, too much credit. Yeah, that's we're not giving him weight. And do. the fact that we all keep saying it might possibly be like, this is all like a ploy. He's going to take that idea too. And then he's going to say like, yeah. yeah, it was, you guys. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, the uh, just to quickly look at the Oompa Loompa actress, mm. 29 year old uh, Kirsty Patterson, um, and wanted to act more in children. It's entertainment because she enjoys it. I'm looking at the Vulture interview oh, with her. Um, she said she got roped in because the acting gig was listed on Indeed, uh, which is like a yeah. way you can get acting jobs yeah. and like um, event acting jobs. Um, and the reason why I think Jessica and I relate so hard to this being in Los Angeles this is everywhere. This kind of stuff is everywhere. You see acting gigs for like some creepy birthday party that ends up being at some celebrity's mansion, but you have to pretend like you're Rod Stewart. Our friend does it for princesses. Um, on our yeah, scene. some of it, a lot of it, I don't want to say this whole industry is corrupt because a lot no. of it is legit. Mm-hmm. You just, you pretend to be a princess. You pretend to be Spider-Man at a birthday party mm-hmm. and you just, you don't booty dance. But there are videos that can look like a and Spider-Man hey, and booty Do dancing. not shame them. Because those parties, those kids are enjoying it. 
There's yeah. there's time for those parties and there's times not for those parties. <laughs> right. They say that there was uh they had to go to the warehouse on Friday for a dress rehearsal. Um and the actors were just shocked, you know, like they had to learn all this stuff, like with mm-hmm. hours to spare. And then we're just told to improvise. Um, and they kept going on of like, you know, yeah, just make it up, just make it up. And, you know, they're given these like AI generated talking points and they didn't even hide the fact that it was AI generated. They're like, yeah, we've made this with AI. So what? Um, and then they like, uh, so when they turn up on the day, they said they gave us the costumes and the costumes were just inappropriate and really cheaply made. Um, the orange body paint that they had to wear, they didn't have. So they had to like kind of just like come up with their own stuff. This is why I'm just so confused by it because it did. And we might get into it later. So I'm sorry if I'm jumping in. But when I did look into the House of the Illuminati, it looked like they did a lot of warehouse parties. And I was like, yeah. I feel like there wasn't that cross where for some reason someone didn't tell someone else that this was for kids. Because you guys right. bought a bunch of things that would be at like a rave party. Like these mm-hmm. would be at rave parties filled with like 300 people in there. Not a little walkthrough for children and their family on a Saturday. I think part of the problem is, is like these set pieces are too small for the scale of the, the yeah. warehouse that they put it in. That's what so there's a lot of just mm-hmm. empty space for this warehouse. If you were, I don't want to say if you were to cram all of this and like, because you can do a thing. It's not around in San Francisco anymore, but it's called Urban Putt. And it's like mini golf. Like it's a small space and it's an indoor putting um mini golf experience and it's super fun and like yes but i mean urban putt in san francisco has some pretty incredible production value better than this i would say i loved urban putt and it's like you can have a a beer and there's like food and it's actually kind of cool we all know of things like this these are everywhere in america and in europe but like the thing is is like the way this was advertised is not what you got and it's it's just unfortunate. I think people know that you can go to like lower scale versions of these things. You pay like 20 bucks and it's like, you know what you're getting going into it. This, the AI on the website is just far more advanced than I think these guys could deliver. And the issue is they knew that. I think they knew that. I think they were expecting. I do think that there was a lot of things that didn't drop the day of. Like, I'm yeah. sure a lot of things fell through, just like Fire Festival. Everything fell through the day of. And instead of just they should have just taken the L and refunded everyone immediately. They were like, no, we need to follow through because I don't want to refund everyone. And then they went through and now it's like, you got shamed, embarrassed, and you had to refund everybody. Yeah. So we've been talking about this house of Illuminati and Billy cool. And I don't want to give him too much credit. Mm -hmm. I just think like calling your company, the house of Illuminati and some of the other things he's been credited with. So Rolling Stone did a whole Uh, not a whole expose, but they dug up everything they could on him. Um, He's the sole employee of House of Illuminati. And and that's one of several companies he's registered. And it was incorporated only this past November. So this is just like a recent thing. Um, And the website, like of the company, like Willie's Chocolate Experience website, is filled with AI generated art, advertising these unparalleled immersive experiences. Um, Other experiences include mystique galas and enchanted retreats. It seems like it was all just kind of AI written. Now, since this whole like crisis, uh, Billy Cole has taken steps to like scrub various social accounts. He took down his LinkedIn, he took down his YouTube. Um, and on those before he called himself like a business guru and a life coach, of course, they're always life coaches. Mm -hmm. They're always gurus. Right. But you can still see the Wonka event website. Um, and he claims all this other stuff, but there's like books that he has published. Um, (sighs) and it's, you can see them on Amazon. The titles include one that says it's called Selling Innocence. And it's a novel about a human trafficking survivor who navigates a treacherous landscape filled with politicians, clergymen, celebrities, and billionaires. And we've seen that kind of language before. Definitely embracing the themes of QAnon, conspiracist movement, uh, misinformation about Jeffrey oh, Epstein. Yeah. Like, I'm like, it's just. Maybe he was not smart enough, but maybe he was. Oh, my God. It's like the um this not I'm not trying to be not trying to offend anybody that's like a social media person, but there are tips and skills for like even news sites. There's been journalistic like approaches that were like, oh, we know we get more clicks if we post something so out of pocket and bad. And so sometimes they will ask out to people. These are like older sites that ask out to people. Hey, do you have like a problematic take so we can post it and make people upset? They click on it. This is the same breadth of knowledge this man has in the world. And I think that's what he was doing for this. He was like, if we make something so outrageously bad, it can go viral. 
that's what I'm really digging at here. A lot of people are probably in the comments right now is like, why is New Rockstars talking about this? Oh, you guys are just trying to capitalize on the engagement. Well, there is a reason why these stories go viral on the internet in 2024. And it's because it taps into a conversation about AI. It taps into a conversation about scams. It taps into a conversation about Willy Wonka. It, it taps into a conversation about, is this real? And I do think it was real, but I think it was, I think he embraced the fact that it was going to be a shit show. And this is something that you see on the internet where people intentionally put in fact errors, glitches, things that make it look goofy and bullshit and stupid and scammy, because they know that the response to it will generate engagement. And you see this all the time in our world on the internet where people put out fact errors and misstatements and misspellings of things because, and they'll delete the comments that where people are correcting them so that people will keep commenting on that TikTok. Yeah. And it's also, it's unfortunately not hard to do. No. <laughs> I was like, a lot you of people- don't need AI to do it either. Yeah. And AI can just do it. You can just sit back and let it do it. And then just- Well, I'm saying AI then... can help people do this on a mass scale, mm -hmm. but people are doing it just like- you know, people are creating goofy looking art. Uh, yeah. There's, you can see this on, uh, on TikTok, on YouTube, everywhere on social media where people put in weird, terrifying glitches in the background of their videos, just so people comment like, what did I just see? Did anyone else see this? Uh, or they'll like have someone have a third hand sticking out the back of it. This is like a classic subliminal mm -hmm. messaging tactic in advertising that dates back to the early 20th century where mass media, mass print media, where it was able to be produced in magazines and other print ads uh, just to disrupt someone's thought process as they're looking at an image um, to, to the point to where it becomes a mind worm that overtakes you mm -hmm. for the point of this week. And that's what this experience has done. Yeah. 100%. They're going to get um, a movie out of this. Um, they, you'll see documentaries made a about documentary this. out of this. They're going to get so much out of this. So we shouldn't, we should touch on the question of is Billy cool doing something? It's, is he aware of what he is doing? And to the extent of he, he know like this is like a performance art piece. I guess the question is, is this Banksy? Is this a Banksy? That's that's the fun thing is like recognizing separating what Banksy is from an idiot. Um, I guess yeah. Banksy also could be an idiot at times, but I meant more so that like we know what Banksy's doing. This guy literally probably studied what happened at the fire festival and said, "What if I do the opposite, but tweak it here so it still gets that viral, uh, viral enough, less money on my end, more money from like news outlets, uh, deals, anything." And he successfully did it. And that's where right. I'm like, it's not a performance piece more than it is just a, a scam. It's just right. a scam. He's doing it for money. He's not doing it as like a look in the mirror. This is what we're doing to ourselves. It's not a performance. I think, I, well, it is a performance in that way to make a scam. I think the, right. the word performance piece makes it seem deeper than what it is. And it isn't deeper. It's just a scam. Yeah. This is a scam artist that scammed very 100%. well. He did a hundred percent. He's a horrible I don't know person. If he did it really well. well Cause I think the real scam big. artists we don't hear about, they're out there still being successful. Uh, yeah. This is, this is the thing is like, he wanted the fame still. There's scam artists that are like, I don't care about, go listen to the scam podcast with Lacey Mosley because she goes over all of these, but it's like, those people are like, no, this is a, this is how I survive. This guy's like, I want the fame. I still want yeah. to be the face. I want to be famous from it. And I'm like, that's where it doesn't meet. Also, there's values and morals and those people don't have them. Yeah, I don't want to give this guy a playbook just to say that you're a clever Banksy because I think everyone's going to see through that. And the truth is that this guy is totally a scam artist. He he took money, but he's not on the level. I, I don't think we can compare this to Firefest mm -mm. because in that case, that guy was trying to make a seven figure profit yeah. and, and trying to use uh, like the word of mouth from this event as kind of a clout that he could use 100%. to bail out his struggling other business ventures. It's clear, like that was on a much bigger scale. And the people who were hurt by Firefest, I don't care about the influencers who were hurt by Firefest. I care about the local mm -hmm. uh, the people, people in the, the Bahamas who lost so much money. Um, those are the real victims yeah. of that. In this case, who were the real victims? Like, some parents and kids who lost an afternoon and lost a couple hundred bucks if there was a whole big family who did it. It it like I feel really bad for them. This is just on a much smaller scale. And that's I think, I think that's acknowledge. the note that he took. He was like, I'm not gonna go big. I would never do big. And even like doing like a a rave is too big. He was like, No, I'm gonna do parents. Yeah. Because everything yeah. is it, I don't wanna talk about the like not, not the tactics of going for a parent. 
<laughs> and scamming because like you said these parents are tired they're just trying to make their kids happy they're trying to do they're trying to reach disneyland without disneyland prices especially in glasgow what are you gonna do go to this like weird <laughs> arcade so it's like yeah they were trying these are people that are not easily scammable but like those are the targets that people sometimes will look for people that are tired people that are just trying to survive for a little bit i think immersive experiences are like a big thing right now right you have escape rooms you have uh photos these photos are... photos photo ops social media uh -huh. you share there's, them. there's plenty of these events where you just go and the idea is like you take a photo in front of a wall uh there's like entire pop-up bars there's you know like the thing is, so where is the, the line here? Uh, where is the line? Because I'll tell you, walking into some of these pop-up bars, you go in and you're a little disappointed. I'm like paying 16 bucks for a drink yeah. that just has I'll be like that person. Star Wars reference in it. I'll be that person. Beetlejuice Bar ain't, ain't as crazy as y'all think it is. Um, During Halloween for bar, one week, one they'll do something. Ones. They'll yeah. The atmosphere is fun. It's not Beetlejuice. It's just like a goth it's bar. Not, and I go, oh, it's cool, like there's Tim black Burton, and white stripes. vaguely Tim Burton bar. Yeah. yeah. But I'm like, but, but if they make you ever pay to go in and do a bunch of stuff, it's probably not worth that much money. Uh, but That's no, the thing. if there's a cover of these things yeah. and what's frustrating is you'll go to the stranger things experience and it costs money. Yeah. It costs like 60 bucks. Yeah. Like there's the uh, burlesque show, uh, the empire strips back. And I think that's worth the money because those performers are mm -hmm. so good. But like the fact that it's like a star Wars thing, they're using that. Um, so I don't know where the line is here, but I think in this case, people just decided that this is really goofy. And, uh, and I think you have to like give them more than that. And I just think, I think immersive experiences should be free. They should be free, but they never will be. Um, as soon as social no. media became a system of just like sharing actual media, that's when it was like, oh, we could pay for people to use their phones here. <laughs> if you didn't, yeah. if you didn't have to use your phone, it'd be a museum. Um, and mm -hmm. not like, not the museums you guys think of like art and whatever there's museums for everything there's a museum of broken hearts broken relationships of old technology of all these things and you still technically have to pay to get in those because that you're gonna take photos in those places this is just wild to see i um i think there is room for an immersive experience commentary on immersive experiences yeah 100 percent. and i would watch and it i'd eat that shit up the reason my brain went to banksy here is like i'm just a skeptic like i just i look at something like this and it's so unabashedly transparently bad that there's no way anyone thought that they'd be able to fool people with this and it must be a commentary on these things and seeing the documentary exit through the gift shop that there's like a similar like art gallery exhibition at the end of that where this there's mr brainwash and it's like i think it's meant to be banksy's commentary on the la street art uh collector market Mm -hmm. uh and how like how much money there is in these things that's supposed to be subversive and and anarchal uh and i think that's a fascinating documentary i tell everyone to watch uh because that's what i was getting when i saw this it felt like it was like but again i think i'm overthinking it yeah sometimes <laughs> it's i know i'm overthinking it that was so that was like that's the biggest eye opener is sometimes i'm like i'm like no how but then it's like no, so people just do it. Uh, and they realize m when money especially is on the mind, it's like, oh, yeah, I just did it for money. There's no there's no deeper agenda. I just wanted money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, I'm going to continue looking at yes. every single piece of footage I could find from this just Dude, because I think the fact that it's Willy Wonka themed is, is what we love about that's it. That's the part that you could have done spirited away. You could have done anything else. Speed Racer. I'm just naming off things. But because it's Willy Wonka that's what really stole it like it because this is the entire movie of Willy Wonka is an immersive experience for those children to go through the chocolate factory and here we're like you can live that life too you could be Veruca Salt and it's like no you can't here's a guy that hides behind a mirror <laughs> and jumps out what was the I mean the, the unknown. unknown I get if it's like supposed to be a haunted house thing but it's not a haunted house it's meant to it's, be like a fun getaway for kids. Why do you have this ghost? The ghost <laughs> that hides in the walls. That is insect. That nothing's whimsical of that. What was the guy in um in Willy Wonka with the glasses? Um, Slug Slugworth. Slugworth. That makes Slugworth sense. Wasn't a wall ghost. That wasn't a wall. That was a man that hid in the business. walls with a with a Grim Reaper. Oh, Grim Reaper robe and an MF Doom mask. <laughs> Jabberwock. Yeah, Jabber. Kinda... Why did they have to move like that? That that also fucked up the kids. This was that's the trauma part. I was talking to Evan about it. Evan was like, I would never look at a reflection again. 
<laughs> if I saw that thing come out from behind a mirror. And I was like, mirror. me too. Keep an eye out because I I believe that was another actress who played the unknown and her story still needs to be told. I believe I she's going to be making a video talking about her experience. It may already be out in the world by the time you guys. I am not it. blaming the actors at all when I complain about not this. at all. No, yeah, and also it seemed like from story. the jump they were like, we need to give these kids an experience because these are kids. Like, let's try to like at least hold out hope for the children. And I'm like, yeah, 100. percent You guys are great. I I don't know the House of Illuminati. Someone go find them. Uh, I think the takeaways from this, how do we avoid this in the future? I think if you're going to do an unlicensed immersive experience based on some kind of film IP, go for it, but make it free to at least visit and walk through. If you want to sell drinks there, if you oh, that's like a, a good idea. Bar, that's mm-hmm. fine. You're paying for your alcohol and your flavored mixers or whatever, but just walking through it should be free. A. B, we need to reduce ticket prices so that people can go see movies for cheaper. And it doesn't cost as much as it is. We shouldn't have surge pricing at movie theaters anymore. It should be cheaper for families to go see movies. These Because I, I think it's just too hard to find stuff to do if, with your kids for an afternoon. Like, you, escapism should should not be this. It expensive. should not escape. And we are, oh, that's a that's a video for another day. The charge, yeah. the charge of escapism, and yeah, there needs to be some kind of like it shouldn't require the internet to just go crazy in their response to these things. Like I think, I think the police needs to do more to, or the like local governments need to do more to regulate what these experiences are. So at least they're safe. There has to be a law about. Uh, to be fair, like because this was like where was the where was the safety in it all. Like, I don't think there was yeah. any security. Well, it's a warehouse. I think there might, just... in some of the background, you see people wearing like neon vests. Mm. I think in order to have any kind of public gathering where you have a certain number of people, you have to have security on staff. Okay. At least that's in the US. So I, I don't want to assume that they didn't have security. Okay. There. So not assuming the security, but also like food handling and all those extra things. I just feel like there's probably some laws that got skirted around because it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, don't you also need like uh, and this might just be america you need not a warrant uh you need like a uh something to do some an event uh, a permit a permit you need you need a permit and if there's food that you're charging for there's like i mean again i i have to assume in the uk they have tighter regulations on yeah these things. I assume. but I'll, again a lot of times these things happen and you're just skirting the regulation yeah you know, like, exactly i the i'm sorry it, it's the worst thing i'm going to say in this video is my favorite character is the unknown it <laughs> No, mine my, my too. It is that I'm going to steal that character for like a haunted house. That, that is a great idea for a character in a haunted house that stands behind a mirror and pops out. You're looking in a mirror and he comes out of nowhere. That's lives in the walls. He lives in walls. He's in the walls. <laughs> and he makes chocolate. But <laughs> yeah. there's no chocolate. Where's the chocolate? Where is the chocolate? All right. This has been the sneak peek. Uh, Just to give you guys a preview of what's coming out on the new Rockstars channel this week, Jessica has broken down Kong Skull Island that will be coming out in the days ahead. And your breakdown of the 2014 Godzilla film was so good. It's good. I love 2014 Godzilla. You did such a good job with that. And then our researcher Noah Chen did such a great job as well. And like, I can't wait to see the breakdown of of Kong Skull Island. It's fun. as we continue with this MonsterVerse rewatch. Uh, and then we're also continuing our X-Men snicked, snicked rewatch with X-Men Apocalypse. Uh, because we worked on our Dune breakdown last week, we had to push back our X-Men Apocalypse breakdown just a, a few days. So I think that's coming out on the channel tomorrow if it's not already on the channel. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have our next breakdown of the next episode of Bad Batch. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, X-Men 97 is coming out later this month in the month of March. So we'll be doing a big video breaking down everything that happened in the 90s animated X-Men series on Fox Kids. Uh, everything you need to know. You can watch that on Disney Plus now, but our breakdown will be coming out in uh, the next two weeks or so. Well, guys, this has been a delight, Jessica. I'm glad I was, I, I'm glad we could talk about this. I'm Obviously, so this is extremely excited. important. Yeah. All right. Follow me at EA Voss. Follow Jessica at Lulu underscore Clemens. Subscribe to all three of the new Rockstars channels. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us for this episode of The Sneak Peek. And we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.